Welcome to today's press briefing on COVID-19. We have with us under Secretary for Food and Health, Dr. Choi Tak Yi, Head of Communicable Disease Branch of the Center for Health Protection, Dr. Chang Shok Kwan, and Chief Manager of the Hospital Authority, Dr. Lau Ka Hin. We'll first hear from the Under Secretary. Good afternoon, everyone. It's been over two months since at the start of the fifth wave. We've seen a drop in the number of uh, positive cases recently, but still it's, uh, it remains at a high level. We should not let our guard down and we should uh, abide by all the restrictions and uh, measures and to avoid uh, social gatherings, especially those that involve taking off of masks and cross family activities. Our main point is still to reduce deaths, serious cases, as well as infection. As said yesterday, we have recorded close to 1 million cases of PCR and RAT positive. Well, in the uh, aggra aggravating epidemic situation, the number of patients has exceeded our capacity in the public sector. We are grateful for the help from the central authorities as well as from Guangdong Provincial Government for the deployment of close to 400 um, medical personnel from the mainland to help us. They are very experienced and they have put down their work to come to Hong Kong to help. And they've started to uh, give us their assistance at the uh, AWE, that is the Community Treatment Facilities. With their help, we can better use these facilities. Within March, there are five community isolation centers that have been completed with the help of the central authorities. They are, are those at Qingyi, Santin, the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge, Hong Kong Border Control Point, Artificial Island, Marshik, Marsik Road in Fanling, as well as the one in Hong Shui Q. These centers are for COVID patients without symptoms or with a mild symptom. They, they uh, serve a, a very effective role in stopping the transmission in the community. They also alleviate the pressure on the hospital authority so that the letter can focus on serious cases. There are also three sports centers that are converted to isolation and holding centers for the elderly. They will, they will take over cases referred to them by the HA after assessment. These centers are for those who are recovering and are suitable for discharge. The holding centers will take care of frail elderly persons upon the referral of the HA. They are of mild symptoms and are recovering and in a stable condition, but cannot go back to home or their uh, residential care homes. This will release more beds in the hospital authority facilities. Those who are isolating at home will receive additional measures in a more speedy way. In, that includes a, a material kit. We have, well, the HA has started the use of the isolation care monitoring system. For those who are isolating at home or in community isolation centers for additional uh, requests for assistance, they will be able to get health advice and relevant information. The system, once uh, detecting high risk confirmed cases, will and will uh, transfer the cases to the hospital authority for them to reach out to these people by uh, the patient support call center to give them assistance they need. That includes uh, appointment in the uh, designated clinic as well as uh, oral medication. As I've said that, um, well, we have revised um, our uh, anti-epidemic measures. Recently, we have announced that in relation to vaccination arrangements, um, those between the age of 18 and 59, if they have already received two doses, they may receive the third dose uh, three months after the second dose. For those above the age of 12 and with a weak immu immune system, they can also receive an additional uh, dose three months after the third dose. And those who are staying in residential care home can also receive the um, uh, vaccination 
after vaccination. Now we hear from Dr. Chong. We have received 7,966 PCR confirmed cases and 12,116 cases that are RAT positive. The total number is 20,082 cases. So the accumulative number from PCR and RAT since the uh, beginning of um, the fifth wave, the number has exceeded 1 million. That includes uh, 666 cases or so that are PCR positive and 338,000 cases or so that are RAT positive. Of these 7,966 PCR positive cases, there are 1,279 cases picked up by the hospital authority, 1,383 picked up by um, public health um, laboratory service, and 5,304 cases picked up by private laboratories. In relation to variants, we see that we don't see any L452 R positive cases. 260 of them are, neg are negative to L452 R, and the remaining 1,123 cases are either pending results or with a low viral load, too low to be detected. There are three imported cases. That three of them are picked up on the same day when these people arrived in Hong Kong. Two from Vietnam arriving on the 27th of March via VN594. One from Indonesia uh, flying with MH072 also arriving on the 17th of March. From the HA, they have reported an additional 259 deaths. 206 of them were cases in the past 24 hours. In relation to um, coron to uh, forensic um, pathologists, uh, there are six cases. That covers uh, four females and uh, two, fe two males aged between 57 and 92. Three cases were from residential care homes. And of these six cases, some of them are chronically ill cases, and they passed away between the 28th of last month and the 6th of March. There are 5,188 cases altogether. These are a number of deaths in the fifth wave. But not all of them are caused by COVID. It's just that um, uh, at the time of death, they have tested positive. That includes 1,030 females and 3,158 male, aged between 11 months and 112. Similar to previous analysis, 58% of them are um, residents of care homes and they are elderly people above the age of uh, 80. They account for the majority. For the preliminary death rate is 0.5%. And over 70% of the cases are of the age above 80. And for that age group, the death rate is 8.5%. For those that have, that have received at least two doses, the death rate is much lower, not, on, not 9%. And those that have received less than two doses, 1.32%. There's a difference of over 14-fold. For those above the age of 60, for those who have received vaccination is 0.38 percent those who have received less than two uh 3.8 percent a difference of about 10 times amongst residential care homes there are 10 reports of um cases including seven residential care homes uh, for pe people with disability and three elderly home uh, involving 89 residents and four, 47 staff members. In the two, pre, two previous week, we have received um, 328 cases, including 101 cases uh, for care homes for people with disabilities, which is about 30% of all residential care homes for people with disability. 
227 of them involved elderly care homes, that is a 28%. So altogether, we're talking about 9,000 residents and 2,331 staff members being affected. That's all for my report. Thank you, Lau. Next up, Lau will brief you on HA situation. Good afternoon. We have 10,532 patients receiving treatment in public hospitals. The Lent, uh, North Anta Hospital Hong Kong Infection Control Center, Hospital Authority Infectious Disease Center, and AWE Community Treatment Facility. Last night, we received reports of 65 uh, patients in critical condition, 115 uh, uh, patients in serious condition, and we have 115 patient, critical patients um, receiving treatment in ICU. As of midnight tonight, over the past 24 hours, 206 COVID positive patients passed away, and they were 122 males and 84 females with age ranging from 22 to 106. I'd like to give a case analysis of 206 patients who passed away. 126 patients were care home residents. 114 of them did not have any vaccination record. Among the 49 patients remaining who passed away, 49 received one jab, 31 received two jabs, and two patients received three jabs. For elderly above the age of 65, there were 126. Now, I'd like to highlight some of the cases involving younger patients. First, a 25-year-old patient. The patient had congenital um, renal problem, uh, suffering from hypertension and uh, requiring long-term medication. The other patient, aged 46, resided in a residential care home for the elderly. This patient had a renal impairment requiring dialysis. A 50-year-old patient suffering from lung cancer uh, and is in metastatic status, uh, spreading to the liver. A 51-year-old patient, also a cancer patient had metastasis, uh, metastasis to liver and other organs. A 52-year-old patient, also a cancer patient, cancer spreading to other parts uh, of uh, his body, including liver. A 54-year-old patient suffering hypertension, diabetes, and repeated strokes. And he also resided in a care home for the elderly. A 54-year-old patient with um, hereditary um, cerebellum uh, issue, uh, atrophy, and also um, chronic illnesses. A 56-year-old patient with a previous record of uh, cancer and receiving chemotherapy. A 58-year-old patient with cerebral paralysis, diabetes, hypertension, hepatitis B, and renal function impairment. Basically, he also had a mobility issue requiring uh, long-term care. A 59-year-old patient residing in a care home for the disabled, also suffering from a congenital chromosome disorder, as well as a renal function impairment, uh, hypertension, and also uh, problems with the thyroid gland. A 61-year-old patient residing in a care home for the elderly. This patient was a chronic, uh, chronically ill patient with uh, diabetes as well as a mental disorder. Finally, a 62-year-old patient also residing in a care home for the elderly. Um, who had uh, late-stage renal failure requiring dialysis. For the 12 patients I just mentioned, they were of a younger age, and yet they all suffered from 
chronic illnesses, and many of them resided in care homes for the elderly and the disabled. Because of data lagging, I'd like to report 53 patients who passed away from the 1st of March to the 16th of March, including 30 male and 20 three males with ages ranging from 62 to 103 in the past 24 hours 1074 more patients were discharged on recovery 20 patients were found to be COVID positive upon hospital admission screening and um, testing 40 patients sharing the same water were deemed close contact and for staff members so far 18,876 staff members have been infected and 11,444 of them have recovered and returned to their post that's all for me the floor is now open please state the media organization represent and please be as succinct as, succinct as possible limit yourself to three questions so that you can have um, you can have more. We can have more reporters uh, ask questions. First, I'm from Phoenix uh, Channel. A specialist working in Hall Two of AWE commented on a radio program that the symptoms residing in Hall Two, uh, I mean the patients require uh, residing in Hall Two, did not have. Um, serious symptoms and the XA should review the work procedures. Uh, do you think this is true and do you think we should review the um, allocation of resources? And we have a mainland medical support team joining the AWE. Is there any difficulty in the, your collaboration with the team and has the level of care been improved? As we understand, since the start of the fifth wave of the epidemic, we have been receiving more elderly patients. Many patients are really old. They're in their 80s. Apart from being old, there is another common feature. These patients are chronically ill. These patients reside in homes and they, are, they have mobility issues. And that is why for halls 8, 9, 10, and 11 of Asia World Expo, originally 1,000 beds were allocated to receive patients with uh, better mobility. And now they've been converted to receive older patients requiring more intensive care. I agree with the specialist view, as you mentioned. Healthcare wise, of course, we will do our level best to provide care for our patients. Treatment is equally important, and that is why we're receiving only some 200 patients, um, far from reaching the 1,000 bed capacity, because we'd like to focus our manpower. We have the necessary manpower, but we're not taking as many patients because we'd like to provide more intensive care for them. With the support from the mainland medical team. We hope to further enhance our care for patients. They've been providing a lot of assistance and they are professionals. And we expect to receive more patients as a result. And that each patient will be receiving better care and treatment. Next question. The one on the right in white. Uh, SCNP. So firstly, uh, we interviewed Gabriel Lang, uh, the Dean of Medical Faculty at Hong Kong U. So he said that uh, in, the few, in the next six to eight weeks, uh, the elderly vaccination rate should go to go up to 90% and uh, the government should sort 1 to 1.5 million oral pills before the government can uh, relax the social distancing measures. So do you th uh, does the government think the uh, roadmap by Learn is uh, realistic? So is there any plans or roadmaps uh, from the government? 
And the second question is about uh, a statistic uh, data that we uh, that we've drawn. So uh, we've seen a significant drop in elderly vaccination rate recently, um, from about seven thousand people down to one thousand people. So there, there's been an eighty five percent drop. So uh, is there any plans for the government to, you know, roll out some sort of uh, vaccination plan specifically for elderly people? Uh, uh, for example, at home vaccination plan. So uh, if so, so when will that uh, at home plan uh, is being uh, rolled out? Thank you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, to improve the vaccination rate uh, for the uh, Hong Kong population is always a target that uh, the Hong Kong government is trying to uh, arrive at very uh, intensively. So in the past few weeks, we have set a target of uh, outreaching to all the uh, residential care homes for the elderly to provide the vaccination for them uh, before or, I mean, on or before the 18th of March. So um, that is one approach to um, ensure the uh, elderly in a certain environment will get the vaccination. And of course, the other group of elderly is those community dwelling uh, elderly uh, individuals. So um, we have been trying very hard to Prove the uh, access for vaccination by providing more vaccination centers, even vaccination centers that are designated for elderly people, and also mobile uh, vaccination vehicles reaching different, um, for example, estates where there are more uh, elderly residents. And the other plan is to provide outreach vaccination for people uh, including elderly people who may have same mobility issues. So that is also one of the plans. And of course, we are aware that many um, medical groups are interested in provide such outreach facilities and the government is very happy to collaborate with them to organize these activities. And for the provision of the two new oral medications that um, the hospital authority has uh, given, has starting to uh, provide to the uh, eligible patient groups. I think we are always uh, reviewing the scientific guide, scientific evidence on the effectiveness of these oral medications. And then we'll plan the uh, purchasing strategy and also how to prescribe these medications to the most uh, needy uh, population to protect them. So I think the clinical guidelines would be refined as we uh, start this uh, oral medication program and we also plan the uh, purchasing strategy according to the evidence that we are gathering. Thank you. Okay, Next question. The one on the right in pink. I'm from Orange. I, well, there is uh, an information setting out a division of labor circulating um, on the internet. That's a division of labor between um, mainland medics and uh, Hong Kong medics. Uh, what is that? Why is there a difference? Uh, you said that um, mainland uh, medical team will ne need to familiarize themselves. Will that division be updated and revised? Well, there are two vaccination hotels, at, quarantine hotels at that are uh, um, that are empty, uh, whereas uh, some others are quite full. Why is there such a difference? Would you consider uh, converting the empty ones uh, to for to other uses? Perhaps I will first answer questions in relation to quarantine centers. Well, in the past month or so, the epidemic situation has changed rapidly. We will keep in view the situation and increase the number of quarantine facilities. We have made some changes with the assistance from the mainland. We have sped up the provision of such facilities. Since we don't know how the epidemic situation will pan out, 
we need to make sure that there is sufficient facilities to cater for a large outbreak. Different quarantine centers are different in terms of, say, for example, their uh, specification and, uh, and schedule of accommodation. We will take into account the uh, needs of the individual or their family before making arrangements. We will keep in view the situation. We will constantly review our plans. Um, and make adjustments accordingly. Dr. Lau. In relation to the mainland medical support team, they have already started uh, their work at the community um, treatment facilities at the Asia World Expo. We have started discussion with them, aiming to uh, allow them to start their work as soon as possible. The first batch of um, medical officers as well as nurses have uh, familiarized themselves with um, the workflow of the HA. They have drafted a division of labor and have tested the plans. Discussions of this uh, nature has been completed. A consensus has been reached for them to work together um, while working on, while whilst um, there is certain division of labor. They will work together to provide proper support, care, and treatment to Hong Kong patients. Medical support team, whether they are from Hong Kong or from the mainland, will work to give the best support to patients. We will take into account the operation and arrangements um, to prepare the roster. They will work seamlessly. Mainland team, uh, they will be operating in a closed loop um, management that will be dedicated vehicle transporting them from the hotel to AWE. They will uh, work continuously for four hours uh, wearing the protective gear. They will not take any rest or, or drink or eat. When they have uh, finished their shift, um, they will be deployed somewhere else. Just like the Hong Kong team, the mainland medical support team will stand by round the clock. We thank the mainland team for coming to help us. We do our best to help them adjust by providing them with accommodation, meals and equipment and arrangements that suit their needs. We also arrange them uh, we also arrange accommodation and transportation for them. The team currently is not staying at the Disney Hotel because of the search in manpower at AWE we have also made changes uh, to staff facilities say for example um, staff room changing facilities etc. The mainland support team, come here to help because they want to give the best uh, care and support to Hong Kong people. The hospital authority thank each and every one of them for their timely assistance. The HA has not paid any remuneration to the mainland team. As you all understand that fighting the epidemic is of paramount importance. And we need cooperation from different quarters in order to succeed. Next question. This one in blue. Good afternoon. I'm from Hong Kong 01. I have a number of questions. First, a few days ago, the Medical School of Hong Kong U came up with a projection and that in Hong Kong, some 3.28 million uh, have been infected with COVID-19. That's half of the total population. And each case uh, is uh, supported by three to four unknown infected cases. May I know from you whether there are ways to identify these uh, silent carriers? 
and for members of the public not reporting their case by PCR or RAT online platform, how are you going to identify these silent spreaders in the community? Second question, according to different media outlets, Dr. Ko Wing Man, former Secretary for Food and Health, said in a seminar that uh, Hong Kong is now passively coexisting with the virus and there is no dynamic zero infection achievement to be uh, to speak of. So, uh, Dr. Choi, what is your comment on the former Chief Dr. Ko's comment? And uh, would you like to make a clarification? Finally, about the death cases today, one was a 25-year-old patient. This patient was very young, so we'd like to have more details. When was this patient admitted to hospital? When was the onset? Was there resuscitation after hospital admission? Did this patient receive any vaccine jab? About the fifth wave of the epidemic, I think we're all aware of the raging um, epidemic and its rapid development and the mainland uh, is very concerned. Mainland teams have been dispatched to come to Hong Kong to work with um, the Bureau and the hospital authority and to give advice uh, for us to make improvements. According to Mingland experts' advice, our strategy is to reduce severe cases, deaths, and infection. And we need to take a triage approach in assessing the severity and development of different cases uh, and triage them to, you mean, the patients to different facilities. So for example, we have designated hospitals receiving more severe cases. We also step up our efforts in providing community isolation facilities to receive um, asymptomatic patients or patients with milder symptoms for isolation. And that is our strategy. Now, in relation to asymptomatic uh, patients lurking in the community, I believe this is a study and a projection came up um, in the study by the uh, Hong Kong University. I'll see if uh, Dr. Jen would like to supplement. And perhaps Dr. Lau can take the question on a hospital authority. About the 25-year-old male patient, as explained just now, uh, he suffered from uh, congenital polycystic kidney disease, affecting uh, his uh, physical condition in general. For example, hypertension and general renal impairment he started to uh, exhibit uh, symptoms on the 12th of March. He was sent to uh, A&E unit and the electrolytes level in his kidneys were such that uh, he had excessive urination and then his condition continued to, continued to deteriorate. He was subsequently sent to ICU. He was in intubated and uh, he also had cardiac arrest. Upon resuscitation, he was in frail condition. He was, after all, a chronic patient with poor immunity. And unfortunately, he passed away on the 17th of March. Right, I'm sorry. This patient received the second jab in July last year. And uh, it was beyond tech. Next question. Last row on the right. Um, this is reporter in white. I'm um, from in media. I have uh, two questions for the community isolation facility under the charge of the social welfare department. There was a doctor commenting that elderly patients required more care than treatment. And he also commented that the arrangements at uh, AWE were very bad. And about the latest vaccine uh, vaccination arrangements for adults about uh, for those above the age of 12 with uh, who are immunocompromised, they could receive the fourth jab th three months after the third 
jab. Um, are there any plans to allow the general public to receive the fourth jab? Well, I think we all acknowledge the fact that there's been a, an unprecedented surge in the number of patients in this wave of the epidemic. In previous waves, most elderly patients would be admitted in hospi hospital. There weren't many patients, and we also had several thousand first-tier uh, beds and several hundred second-tier beds. Now, with the surge in the number of patients, we need to triage the patients. That means hospital beds would be reserved for patients requiring the most intensive level of care. Perhaps these patients need uh, breathing support or other kinds of special treatment, such as dialysis. And these patients would be admitted in uh, the in hospitals and probably in ICUs for Asia World Expo facility. We're talking about elderly patients requiring more care than actual treatment. So if there is no special treatment need, they would should be kept at these facilities so that hospitals can be reserved for. Um, patients requiring more intensive care, and that's our triage approach. We do agree that the original design of the Asia World Expo facility isn't for uh, caring for elderly patients. However, we also need to consider making the best use of the available facilities under the current circumstances. And we therefore cut down on the number of patients to be received at the facility so that we can focus our manpower on taking care of uh, patients with more uh, care needs, uh, such as those who are bed bound or those requiring uh, more intensive care. Of course, the ideal, uh, the ideal situation is to have more hospital beds, but at the moment, we can only operate more facilities in the community to uh, provide care. And we have a tiered approach. We have, say, uh, intensive care unit in hospitals and then the Hong Kong Infectious Control Center, um, community isolation facilities. And for younger asymptomatic patients, uh, they may be isolated at home. And this is a rather comprehensive approach, allowing us to uh, allocate optimally resources for patients with different needs. Now, in this wave of the epidemic, apparently, we understand that the vaccination is very effective in guarding against infection and, seria and severe cases. So we urge members of the public who have not completed the whole vaccination program to get jabbed as soon as possible. As for immunocompromised individuals, they may not have um, the same effect on them, so they may need another booster jab. Now, the scientific committee has not yet discussed uh, the fourth jab for the general public. Next question, this lady here. I am from Dim, so Dim News, We uh, Point News. We have received comments from um, readers that the third jab for the confirmed patients won't be available until 90 or to 100 days upon recovery. And then uh, a, pa a, patient was, a patient recovered on the 13th of uh, March. And that means that uh, the patient will have to wait until the middle of June. And then there would be a vaccine window for about a month um, after the vaccine pass has been introduced. Now, uh, has the government received similar inquiries? And uh, can you explain in Cantonese? Uh, the vaccination expert panel has been monitoring the epidemic development and review our vaccination plans. At the same time, the government has used vaccine pass as a measure to
reduce exposure risk of those who have not been vaccinated. Of course, we will make will make adjustments to in accordance with the different um, requirements and changes by, say, for example, revising the deadline for vaccination. I'm from Ming Pao. First, I'd like to ask Dr. Choi or Dr. Chuang in relation to obtaining a certificate to prove that they meet the vaccination requirements in under the vaccine pass. When will the announcement be made? Because some people say that if they if they just show an isolation order or a discharge sheet, well, these places don't know how to interpret that. So how can uh, recovered patients be issued such certificates? Because most people don't know what the guidelines are. Dr. Chang, well, um, what do you think is the cumulative number of infected cases and the percentage? And I see in relation to distribution of uh, confirmed patients. Well, starting uh, starting from last week, uh, for Tun Wun, it has risen from 6.8% to 10.1%. What happened? What are the risk factors? Why is there a jump in um, number of uh, number of cases over a week? So we have over 5,100 uh, deaths. So is uh, the situation worse than what you originally estimated? Of those deaths, how many of them have received um, three doses? Well, some people said that um, they can't get oral medication if they've um, received three jabs. So I want to know about the number of deaths who have been vaccinated three times. Well, there are some exemptions. Say, for example, people who are unfit to be vaccinated because of their age or because uh, they are supported by a medical certificate. We learned that if they have recovered recently, uh, it, it's as if they have received another jab, so adjustments could be made. We we are aware that we need to we might need to make adjustments under the vaccine pass. Well, uh, say for example, showing of isolation order or uh, discharge order or RAT um, test result, but um, it may not be suitable for the information to be shown and uh, verified at these premises. We will issue a notice as soon as possible so that um, the person in charge of these premises can follow. In relation to care homes, there are 281 uh, homes of, for people with disabilities that are affected, which accounts for 84% of the total number of such care homes. For um, elderly care homes, 660, 768 of them, 90 5.6%. We are aware that a lot of the staff members have recovered or are recovering. The number of people affected in terms of residents, we're talking about 8,373 residents from uh, homes for people dis with disabilities and 32,214 uh, 32, residents are from all people's home. Staff members, uh, 2,996 of them are from homes for people with disability. 8,166 of them are staff members of uh, elderly care homes. For homes with over 10 cases, the figure is lower. For homes for disability, 230. For elderly homes, 693. Do you have the percentage of uh, residents that have been affected out of the total? 8,373 is 45.8% .8 of the total um, population. 
of uh, those staying in residential care homes, uh, 32,214 uh, uh, residents of elderly care homes, which is 42.9%. But what about the epidemic situation in Tun Mun as well as figures of um, those who are, have been vaccinated and died? We do notice that um, there are differences in different places in the distribution. Perhaps that there is a localized outbreak over there. Um, from Now TV, first of all, it's said that um, the government plans uh, to introduce AstraZeneca vaccination for those uh, that are uh, immune immunocompromised. But previous previously. Um, the previously it um, it was suspended because uh, of a risk of a thrombosis. Well, is it going to be given the green light now? Previously, to talk about a vaccine pass and a certificate or a proof or proof given to people involved. Can you give us more information, Dr. Choi? At these premises. If they, if the person in charge are shown relevant SMS, it can serve as proof for, for them to be allowed in. And some people said that uh, two doses of BioNTech is a complete cause. That was the saying previously. But in June, you, but by June, you said that under the vaccine pass, it will have to be three doses. Based on what um, is there such an arrangement? You talk about uh, six cases that are reported by f forensic um, pathologists. Why? Is it because uh, they because uh, it wasn't known that they have been tested positive when uh, before they died, or uh, it was only known at the time of the autopsy? In relation to vaccine pass, there was a similar question. At the moment, there is no convenient way for people to just show relevant record to prove that they can enter. Currently, there are different records, say, for example, um, proof of discharge, isolation order, or relevant SMSs. We will remind person in charge of these premises uh, to accept these certificates. But of course, the best way is for us uh, to um, for us to provide, uh, say, uh, a QR code or some kind or the use of some kind of platform. For the cases reported by forensic pathologists, there are some cases that came from residential care homes or elderly homes or people who died at home. And when the medical record reaches the forensic pathologists, there might be symptoms or unknown factors that uh, would arouse the suspicion of uh, the pathologist for them to test these cases, and if the RAT done is positive, then they would report to us. Of course, uh, there are cases when RAT um, when RAT is done either themselves or at uh, care homes. What about AstraZeneca? Well, I know that it is an, a monoclonal antibody, it's not a vaccine. In Hong Kong, well, registered doctors can, for the purpose of, um, for, on the basis of treating specific patients, make use of prescribe this medicine. Evil Shield is not a registered pharmaceutical product. However, registered Medical practitioners can prescribe such medication for uh, specific patients. 
Thank you very much. If there are no other questions, that's the end of the press briefing.